Good day, folks. I'd like to show you an example of my last publication about the displacement currents. And I know this is very advanced stuff. And uh, just to prove the point here that you don't need the high voltage dynamics. So let's just strip out the high voltage dynamics and give you the example of capacitor A into capacitor B here. So by, by this example, folks, this is not the complete circuit. This is just like one part of it to show it to you. Now, optimally, what would be nice here is eventually to have an additional switch, which I don't have here, to feed back this additional energy back into the input at some point. Or else what's going to happen here is in this state, I'm eventually going to have to manually start flipping capacitors around. But for the sake of showing the effect, it's good enough for now and even for anyone to experiment with on their own. So to start here, this is capacitor A over here. It's 500F and it can handle 2.7 volts. Same capacitor here. So I charge this one at 1.96 beginning. This one was discharged, okay? So what I decided to do is I just found a random power supply transformer I had around the house. This is an AC to AC, 110 to two volt AC. So what I've done is I've connected the, it in reverse. So the low voltage side is completing the path. So I'm doing a switch here. So right now I'm switching in that Hertz, which was the optimal. And what happens is I start off at 1.96 volts here and impulses it's charging it here. So we're not actually wasting the energy, we're transferring it from this capacitor into this capacitor. So sure enough, because these are very high farads, after about an hour, this one dropped to like 0 0.01 of a volt, while this one went up around the same time at 0 point of a volt or so, you see? So what I'm getting at is whatever percentage dropped out of this one, I saw back in this one. So of course, maybe minus 10% losses or so, but all in all, what I'm getting at is we're just transferring with the help of the switch, the charge from here to there. And the displacement current is what's actually rectifying this full bridge rectifier here. And this is charging a set of 10,000 farads, okay? So there's a big difference here between 500 and 10,000, okay? So this has been running now and these were set to zero, you see? So now we're already at 2.51 volts. So there's definitely more here than there was when I started, okay? And this is very efficient because because these are very high farad capacitors, it takes a while to, to this. What I'm getting at, folks, is if you use two high farads, if you're not discharging it into a load or a short, the capacitor is limited by its own inherent like internal uh, resistance, so how fast it could accept the charge. So it's like how you charge a super capacitor and it can take 10 minutes on a power supply because you know it takes more than one joule of energy in one shot to recharge these. So the same thing applies if you were to take a fully charged one and try and charge it direct. You'd still have to wait a few minutes for it to successfully transfer over. It's not instantaneous like we normally would expect out of capacitors because these are just so powerful capacitors. So what happens is the dynamics are a little bit different with super capacitors. It simulates through the transformer basically a steady state. So what happens if it's a steady state, you don't you need a time varying effect in the field to be able to induce a voltage on the primary, right? So in order to create this effect, we need to use a switch to, 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 to chop it up so that it simulates basically an AC effect with the displacement current. All this does is actually slow down the charge from here to here. It doesn't actually eat it up or anymore, but it allows us a compatible signal to hit. This happens continuously, and as you see, there's a massive gain here. Now, obviously, at high voltages, things change here you can squeeze a lot more joules with a lot less capacitance. So you increase the high voltage like Don Smith does, shrink the capacitors down massively. And if you calculate it right, you could figure out an area where one inherently directly discharged to the other will last much less than a second and distribute that full energy. Now what happens is let's say your discharges are 50 milliseconds or less at high voltage. Well, if you pass that through a transformer that's suitable for it, then you're simulating the same AC-like effect 
without having to control the switching discharge slowly like we're doing here. But ultimately, you end up with the same effect, and some would argue, arguably say that high voltage dynamics offers more efficient transfer of energy. So in part, that's why Don Smith decided to use high voltage, but there's no specific rule that tells you it has to be high voltage interaction. You can see it going up there even more. Now, Don Smith even hinted that, oh, you could do it with five volts and a super cap without getting into the details and still get a high output. Well, here's a demonstration. So this is just running the switch here. Now, I know what you're going to say, folks. Oh, it's being powered by the switch. The switch is leaking. It's not free energy, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what, folks? Before I put the switch, I did it manually by doing this to it for five minutes. And then I observed until the charge started coming up. Then when I confirmed it was working, I said, I'm getting tired with my hand here. So I'm just going to automate it for a switch for now just to observe the effect. And obviously, the next step here would be anyone who wants to do this to scale it up to what they need. Obviously, build the proper transformer to match the capacitors you're using with. And obviously, that would run the switch, folks. You can see there's a massive gain here. But I just want to tell you that it's not coming from the switch. You can do this experiment yourself. And please do tap it manually. No switching through a transformer. Rectify that and that will charge a bigger capacitor. So I just wanted to show you the example. There's nothing connected there. That's why I wanted to show you in case someone says, oh, it's his magic box. It's all disconnected. So the switch here is only pulsing this capacitor into this capacitor through the transformer here. And I'm running it in reverse. So the high, because this is like, you know, less than a volt essentially, or close to a volt, I should say, depending on what discharge state it's at. Speaking of discharge state, let's take a look at what we're at. Because this ran all night, okay? And I started off with 1.9 over here. So I don't know if I can do this while holding the phone here. All right, so I'm holding it there and look. 1.78, it ran all night. And I started off at 1.96. So I lost about 100... I gained like over two over here you see this is a massive gain we moved around 100 millivolts from here and dumped it into here but uh, by doing that this went up to two point well over two volts at much higher farads so this is the point I'm trying to make here there's something really here and all you have to do is figure out all the taps you want and tune your taps to your capacitors and you could even store one of those taps to run an auxiliary load off the capacitor like a regular DC while still charging itself. So I hope this puts light on what I've been trying to explain, displacement current through capacitive discharges and cycling it back and back and with very minimal loss through the help of switching, of course, to do that, right? So again, I hope this helps and have yourselves all a great day. Thank you for watching.